The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 20th, a terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Send it early. And in that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading in the green. The Dow's up 252, S&P 39, NASDAQ 161. Uh, it'd be good if I actually show you something other than yeah, other, other than the running man out there. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see if we can get you the right chart up here. Here we go. This is what we're looking at. Okay, perfect. So uh, we were talking about the indices trading. Uh, Russell's up 25. The semi's 21. Tranny's 228. They're the big mover to the upside. Spot politics is still above its 50-day exponential moving average and moving lower. 22.37 is the print. We've got gold off two bucks, silver's up 44 cents, lights recruit back 14 pennies, natural gas off 17 cents, leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got booking holdings, that's 85 bucks, nearly 4%. Mercado Libre, 5%, 55 bucks. Shopify, 34, 3%. Tesla, 31, 3%. Google's up 1%, that's about 25 points to the upside. Amazon is the big leader, off 10 bucks, not a big deal, that's three tenths of percent. Um, Valneva, Something or other is down nine bucks, nineteen percent. Peloton off seven, off twenty three print, uh, twenty three percent, uh, and climbing. That's seven fifty to the downside. Taskus Inc. down uh, seven bucks or nineteen percent. So there's some big movers, and there are some big shakers out there. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So let's immediately just simply go jump into the indices, and we'll go to our questions out here. So with regard to the indices, the first thing I want to do is uh, – this take me just a moment here to set up – is where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah, I'm in Delray Beach. Where are you at? Now, where we're at, I was really referring to from a market standpoint with regard to the cycle. So what that means is we're going to take a look at this. Okay, perfect. So here we've got our seasonal cycle. So what do we know about what the Dow's average movement is over the last 86 years? Well, all we have to do is come to this chart. This chart is what tells us. So typically on average, the Dow tops on January 6. When did the Dow actually make its high this year or last year? January 3rd. Hmm. Something to think about. Now, what this tells us is that on average, the Dow will move lower on a, on a normal seasonal cycle, will move lower into the end of the month, January 30th. Well, today is the 20th, and we could be getting signals in the Dow. Could be. We won't know until day's end, but we could be getting signals that this is going to form a bottom and we should see kind some kind of move higher. Now, we don't use these dates as a, it's got to be to the date. We use it as a guideline. We recognize the uh, the average cycle movement out here. We're in this small, unfavorable seasonal cycle, but it usually ends from the it begins in the first week of January, as it did this year, and ends in the last week of uh, January. But what you really want to do as you start to get close to those dates. And I'd say the 20th is getting close to those dates out there. You want to look for some kind of bottoming pattern. 
If we get that, now, even though I have a perspective because of the TD9 counts on the annual basis, the yearly cycle out there, that we've seen the high for the year and the markets are going to move lower. I could be wrong, and we have to explore both sides of the transaction, or we should at least explore both sides of the transaction. But right now, if we do get a bottoming signal on the daily time frame, certainly for the Dow, but we'll take a look at the other indices as well, that would suggest we could see a rally. Now, this would suggest we would see a rally up until maybe the first uh, week of February, February 3rd to be specific, but we won't tie ourselves to those dates. Instead, we'll continue to look at chart patterns out there. So really what we're seeing that is taking place in the markets right now is nothing more than what happens on average or has happened on average during the last 86 years. So we don't want to read too much more into it than that. Now, we would read more into it if come tomorrow. So I used to go whitewater, whitewater rafting in the uh, – on the uh, New River and the Gauley River up in the West Virginia. I don't know if many of you, maybe some of you have actually uh, done that experience as well. In the New River, there was a place, there would be a big rock that we would uh, come to. And, uh, and and everybody would get out and people would jump off the rock. Now, when you're in the boat and you're looking up at the rock and you're watching people jump off, you're saying, to, I'm saying to myself, maybe you're not saying to yourself, that looks pretty easy. But then you get up to the top of the rock, that boulder. And it wasn't really a rock because you're, you're, it's about 30, well, it was a rock, but it was like, I don't, I don't know the exact measurement. But I'm not exaggerating when I say it's probably 30 feet. Many of you might say 30 feet doesn't seem like much. Well, when you get up there and you start looking over the side, you might say, I don't want to jump. Now, I didn't say Stevie said that, uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that say, you know what? It looked uh, better when we were sitting in the boat versus being up on top of the rock. Well, what the markets were doing, get where are you going to, Steve-O? Uh, I'm going to whitewater rafting. That's where I'm going. No, we're going back to what the markets did yesterday is, or the ES Mini, I should say. What it was doing, it was doing that little, oh, yeah, I went up to the top of the rock and I decided not to jump. And for it to jump, price needs to close below the bottom of its weekly profile. And that number is 45.49. Yes, we got below it yesterday. We got down to a low of 45.14. Doesn't matter what happens intercession. The body of the candle is truly the essence of price. The wicks, the upper shadow, the lower shadow, those are nothing more than the screaming memes. That is the extreme emotions that took place during that candle session. These are weekly candle sessions that you and I are looking at. I know somebody out there saying, hey, Steve-O, you're not looking at the Russell 2000. It is trading below the bottom of its weekly profile. Yes, and it is the weak link out there. That's for sure. But I'm more interested in the ES Mini. Really, the NQ and the Dow, but really the ES Mini because it's providing us with the best pattern. So tomorrow, and by the way, tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and record the show between 8 and 9, as well as the entire week next week out there. Of course, you say the entire week. That's just Friday, Steve. No, I'm referring to next week out there. So uh, we'll always try to make – I'll always try to make the shows as pertinent as I can for the 1 to 2 o'clock time frame out there. But I would love you to join me live and you know send me requests and so forth. So everything will be the same that way. But here, with regard to Stevie and the – a new river out there that's what the es mini was doing yesterday and it depends upon tomorrow's close if we do get a close below that 45 49 level out there that's going to give us a signal that we've got that change in trend very similar if you take a look on the left hand side that little red arrow that's what we saw back at the uh, covid uh, move lower the covid crash so to speak once price closed below that profile level which was 3086 it was off to the downside off to the races which i would expect and anticipate would be the same here and eventually we may get below that level but right now price looked over that edge and said yeah i'm not going to go ahead and jump and so that's what we're dealing with so now back to the daily time steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago and the student has now become the master steve won the prestigious timer of the year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year an amazing accomplishment steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Sorry about uh, going through the uh, through the uh, break uh, there, the commercial. But uh, we didn't we didn't really miss anything at this stage. So we're taking a look at the seasonal cycle, knowing that we should expect or anticipate some type of bottom to form. And because we have A to B equals C dependent, so we've got all four equity future contracts up on our screen. And I'll switch over to the white background chart so it's a little bit easier to see. But here's where I can draw on those A to B equals C dependent. So in the ES mini yesterday, with price closing below 45.7275, that generated an A to B equals C to the downside. And its price projection is 4504. Now this morning, as I mentioned, price got down to what 4514, I believe was the number. Yeah, 451450. Uh, so it didn't hit that price projection exactly. But if we do get a bullish reversal candle at day's end, that's close enough for Stevie's work to confirm a Gartley buy pattern. In the case of the NDX 100, it's not the A to B equal CD pattern I like to use. What I mean by that is the retracement was a 91% retracement. That's the B to C leg. So you know it's pretty easy just to make a move of a move to get back down to the generate the A to B equals CD pattern. But nonetheless, we're still going to use it. Price got down to the 1.272 expansion level at 15.034. And if we do get a bullish reversal candle, then that would suggest that we have a Gartley buy. The same thing inside the Dow. So the Dow yesterday went ahead, or I guess it was, I guess it was really two days ago, when, when price closed below 35.521. That's what triggered the A to B equals CD to the downside. Price made it to more than the one-to-one -one level. Remember, we use these price projection areas as guidelines, not that it has to hit it exactly. And so if we get a bullish reversal candle today inside the uh, Dow, um, then that's going to really kind of coincide to that January cycle where we start to move lower and we make a bottom and then we bounce. And then the question becomes, where do we bounce to? And we'll take a look at that. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, it's A to B equals CD pattern would take it down in 1935. That would just be the one to one price projection. However, you'll see as we turn over. And so even though. And we've done this a couple of times uh, on the show where we've taken a look at in, we've taken a look at instruments and um, we've seen A to B equal CD patterns and some people have said well why are you saying that this instrument might bottom and it's because there are other patterns that you and I take a look at for a bottoming signal one of those signals is that Rhodes momentum indicator signal it is a fabulous uh, um, signal out there for tops and bottoms in this case here you're looking at the lower right hand panel chart that is the Russell 2000 you can see prices stretch that's what triggers that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. It's, a, it's an entire formula that I share with subscribers out there. And right now you've got a bullish piercing candle. 
So if we do get that, then what we would expect or anticipate is the Russell 2000 would bounce up into about the 2130 level. That is the bottom of its profile as well as approximately where that oscillator and change line area is at. If we get bullish reversal candles in the ES mini, all it needs to do to generate that is close above yesterday's open. That is the same in the NQ. That is the same inside the Dow. So that makes it easy. That's all you've got to look for. You might say, well, Steve, I don't have access to the ES mini. What is that number? That number, good question, is going to be 457775. You get a close above that, you will have a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. Inside the NQ, the magic number is going to be any close that would be above that would be above, uh, shoot, it keeps missing, uh, 15. Okay, I, I have another way to do it. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's on a different screen. So the level you're looking for inside the NQ would be 15, 238.75. You get above that, you're going to have a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. In the case of the Dow, Dow Equity Future Contract, it needs to close above 35.301. And the Russell's already got a piercing uh, candle uh, right now. So uh, as long as it holds within halfway of the candle from yesterday, then you'd have a signal. Now, what you ideally like to see, if there's going to be some type of bottom in the indices, we won't. We're, I'm not saying there's going to be one unless we get these bullish reversal candles out here. If we do, then we've got completed patterns and we should see a move higher out there. Now, what we'll do during the show, not right now, because I want there's a number of questions that have come in, and I want to be able to get to those before the end of the show. Uh, but if we do have enough time, we'll go take a look at my eight panel charts for the ES Mini, the NQ, and so forth out there. So hopefully that works for everybody. Let's get to our first question. Our first question coming in from Craig H. And Craig wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol COMP, that is Compass. So let me get over to our three panel charts out here. Or I'm already on them. Oh, you're just, I got to change screens. Give me a moment here. Sorry about that. Okay, so right now I've got the GDX. Actually, he asked about the GDX, or he actually asked about Nugget. So let me just stay with this, and then we'll come back to Compass for him. But you know if you're going to ask me about Nugget, I'm going to first come over and take a look at the GDX. Now, what we had take place yesterday, big wide-ranging bar, as the GDX was making the one-to-one -one price projection of its A to B equals CD pattern. That is typically not how markets end. That is typically not how a, a, um, a to B equals CD pattern will end. Now, if we just have sideways movement over the next several days out here, and you get a bearish reversal candle, then it hadn't ended on yesterday's bar, um, but you, you could see that, and that would be that would set up a currently a sell uh, pattern out here. So that's only if we get a bearish reversal candle. In lieu of that, price should then go target the next A to B equals CD level, and that's up at the 33.65 to 34.75 level. But uh, even though you had that confirmed, A to B equals CD, taken on a swing point, wide price spread, accelerated volume, that doesn't mean you're out of jail. And if we take a look at the JL cell out here, we just go to the weekly time frame chart. And what I have is I've turned on my trend lines. In fact, they're on the monthly time frame chart as well. So you got different trend lines for different time periods because it's using different uh, candlesticks out here. But you can see that the uh, GDX has also made it to the 0.618 retracement of its move from the high that was from the week of November 15th down to the low of the week of December 13th. This is an area where you would expect to see people get off the elevator which they're doing right now, doesn't mean it's the end of the move, but it could be the end of the move, quite frankly. Why? Because if you take a look at where the top of that weekly profile is, it's at 3305. So you've got the trend line, you have resistance, you've got 3305 as a level of resistance. That is where price needs to close above, preferably close above it tomorrow. Doesn't have to, but if you do get that close above it tomorrow, then it starts to get out of the woods, says you make your way back into the 3508 level. Really, the monthly chart would be suggesting to move back to 3986. Of course, you can see its trend line that it needs to be able to take out. So with regard to the G, and, and even though we're asking about the nugget, or in this case here, Craig is asking about the nugget, I want to make sure that we take care of the GDX first. Interestingly enough, the nugget really is showing those same patterns. Doesn't always do that, uh, but it is right now. Now, the same pattern in that nugget has hit the resistance level of 54.1. Now, Craig's question, because he's in this, is where should he expect to sell uh, and uh, where should he find support out here? So in the case of support, all I can do is go find our uh, oscillator and change line level. So let me get over to a different set of charts out here, and we'll pull those over for the nugget. And so now we'll get right to Craig's specific question, which is where is support? So as we take a look at NUGT, let's actually get to current date out here. Oh, so the oscillator and change line is way down at 4874. 
you're at 52 bucks out there. You know, that's almost an 8 or 9% move to the downside. So, But that's the only support level that I've got out here, uh, Craig. Uh, ideally, where price is targeting, forget the A to B equals CD patterns. I don't want you to forget them all together, but where price is likely targeting is the 59.42 level, which is the TD9 breakdown here. Now, that's coming from the daily time frame chart. Don't think the weekly has anything more. The weekly, the only thing more that the weekly is providing to us is if, in fact, price can close above the top of that weekly profile, then 64.01 would be its uh, target out there. So, Craig, I hope that helps you out with regard to Nugget. Up to the upside, looking at about 59.42. To the downside, support could be at the 48. 74 level out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. We'll continue uh, answering the requests that have come in. One from Alex, one from James, one from Tom, and Hector and the fuel inspectors. Be right back. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. Let's go take a look at uh, Compass Inc. COMP is the uh, ticker symbol out here. This is also for uh, Craig. And uh, Craig, this generated a nice bottom pattern yesterday. As soon as we get this white background chart to open up here, you'll see that rose momentum indicator signal that was confirmed yesterday. So we had price moving lower. You had that bullish reversal candle. You're back inside a uh, daily profile out here. So what price should do is go target 937. That's where the sellers are at. 
And if price can close above 937, then price should move up to 1102. And if price can take out 1102, you've got a change in trend signal. That's coming from the daily time frame. Unfortunately, this instrument hasn't traded long enough. However, it's traded just long enough for us to look at the weekly time frame and see that last week was a TD nine count bottom. And as long as price does not close below last week's low, you have a confirmed weekly bottom. Now, this would suggest I'm going to turn back. I'm going to turn these charts off here and go back to the white, uh, the black background chart. To give me a moment, and that would suggest that price could go target the 1119 area. You really want to use the daily time frame as price moves up on this on the roads meant to mitigator signal out here. What you really don't want to see this do is close back below 825. 825 is a level where there was both the uh, bottom and the center of its daily profile, so that should have been a strong support level. Price did get below it yesterday and the day before, but you're back above it today, and yesterday was that confirmed roads meant to mitigator bottom. So that's what I see when we take a look at ticker symbol COMP. That's not the NASDAQ composite. That is Compass Inc. out there. I do hope that helps you out. Alex writes in, and Alex wants to take a look at, boy, that small print, SoFi. So let's go take a look at SoFi out here. And what is the question? Uh, has a recent run-up changed the outlook for SoFi? Uh, thanks, Alex. So recent run-up, I guess you're just referring to the last couple of days. So price is back inside its daily profile. It's back inside its weekly profile. And the resistance level for both the daily and weekly are in about the same area, uh, Alex, 1685 for the daily, 1696 for the weekly. So nothing has changed there. Uh, we do have, I believe we've got a confirmed roads to indicator bottom here for SoFi. Let's pull over the daily time frame chart and confirm that as well. And here we can see that you had a gap up yesterday. Today you've got a bull sash candle as well. So price should go target at 1685. The daily time frame suggests, Alex, if price can close above 1685, the next move, I don't mean on the very next day, but the next move over time should take us to 2204. And 2204 is the TD9 breakdown level. The weekly time frame chart here for SoFi shows us what? Not much, really. Um, it shows us that uh, you got an oscillator and change line. If price can close, we're just going to leave it. If price can close about 1696, that looks good. So your question specifically was, has the recent run-up changed the outlook? Maybe the outlook you were thinking is this did not form a bottom pattern. And it did for the daily time frame. Uh, it hasn't for the uh, weekly time frame. Uh, but it does have that bottom. If price can take out resistance at 1685 to 1696 level, uh, then SoFi will have definitely given us a at least at least a short-term change in trend signal. So, Alex, I hope that answers your question. If not, go ahead and write back to me, and I'll make sure that we do that. JJ writes in, and Jay wants to take a look at uh, Lily. Eli Lily, L-L-Y, is a ticker symbol out here. So let's go see what it is uh, doing. Uh, right now, it's trading out at 247 and a quarter inside a brand new daily profile that formed today. Now, this is bullish in structure. So, James, if you get a close above the center, which is 250.22, that's going to suggest you run all the way up to the top of that profile, 262.40. Now, there's resistance, and that resistance is some trend line resistance. So, price closed below it on a weekly basis last week. So far, the move higher has run right into that old support level, which old support can become new resistance. So, you want to watch that trend line. As I pull over the white background charts for Lilly out here, Eli Lilly and company, the daily time frame tells us what? Not much. I do see an A to B equals C D to the downside. Let's see if this thing has completed it enough. We'll just use the conservative version out here. So there's the A to B. Here is the uh, C to D. And I don't know if that's really close enough for my line of work out here. But what we do have, James, is an oscillator and change line that has recently changed colors three or four days ago. So price and that should catch up to each other. So even though I mentioned if price can get above 250.22, we're not going to change that. And the change is that price would make a move to the 255.50-ish level. If price can close above that oscillator and change line, then we're looking at 262.41 to 265.88. That would become your battleground levels out there for Eli Lilly. That's on the daily time frame. The weekly chart out here tells us what tells us that price is still trading below the bottom of its weekly profile that could open up the door for Eli Lilly to get back to 182 and 92 
you know, as I look at this, this could just really be more of just a counter trend move, very much like uh, what we're likely seeing in the indices and the equity futures out there. So, James, I do hope that helps you out with regard to Eli Lilly. If there's anything else that you need, go ahead and write back to me. The next question coming in from, well, I take that back. We've got a caller on the line, and it is Garo in uh, California. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? Very, very good. Thanks so much for asking. So Goldman Sachs, I believe, is what you're calling about. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, pull your charts, uh, my charts that I have for you on the screen. And while I'm doing that, can you just describe to me what it is that you're looking for and how I can best help you? Uh, not much. I don't want to take your time very much. Uh, uh, everywhere they're talking about buy Goldman Sachs now. Uh, it's a good a good price for which is dropped that it's done two, three days ago. Um, I want to see what, what's your idea regarding, is it wise to buy it now because the daily and the weekly is horrible? Um, um, uh, what is your idea? Is it good to buy 100 shares and leave it? Uh, or it's not the time now? Not the time that I can see. So what's taking place this week uh, as we speak is we now have a, oh, geez, why did that work? We have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Hopefully I can draw that. What the heck is going on? Hmm. I'm going to try it one more time out here uh, to get the A to B equals CD pattern. Here we go. So right now, the, the B point of an A to B equals CD would have been the week of December 20th. And that had 9.7 million shares. We're not even done this week, and we're already at 23 million shares. So this has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. I'm going to expand out the weekly chart. That's what we're focused on. I'm going to turn off the trend lines out here because they're really not helping us much. They're just cluttering up the chart. So we've made the one-to-one -one level as we speak right now. But if you look at how you come off of the C point, if it's an explosive move, and I would say the last two weeks qualifies an explosive move, girl, this tells us that it wants lower price. Those lower price ranges are 336, 316, 293. So that's coming off of the weekly time frame chart. When I look at the daily time frame chart, we're well below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. We're also now trading below the bottom of a brand new monthly profile that formed this month. And if we see, and it's only the 20th, but if we do see a close below 359.29, that suggests that we should see lower price inside of uh, Goldman Sachs. Now, the only chart on my white background mm -hmm. screen that I have right now at the moment is the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, again, it would also have that same A to B equals CD pattern out here. Uh, if you did get a bullish reversal candle, then it would suggest that you would see at least some type of counter trend move. And I showed that counter trend move could take us up to about the 375 level. We don't have that signal right now. This mm -hmm. is an inside bar. And this suggests that, uh, no, you don't have any kind of a bottom today. Is this like an ultimate bottom that people should buy? Garo, I'm not seeing it in the charts when I take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly charts out there. We're going to a hard break here or any kind of break. So do me a favor. And you're not taking up too much of my time. We love love hearing from you, Garo, and so does everybody else okay. that listens Thanks. to the show. So do me a favor, hold on through this break. We'll come back. We'll make sure that we complete looking at Goldman Sachs. Sea yeah. Roads with TFNN and Garo in California. Be back in a few, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, weekly chart for Goldman Sachs with Garo. And Garo's specific question is, he's hearing from many analysts that are saying, now is the time to buy Goldman Sachs. And so the question is, should I just buy 100 shares and see what happens? So the only pattern, Garo, that I can identify where that would be a possibility is that Goldman Sachs could be in a consolidation pattern, and it could be at the bottom of the consolidation. What I'm looking at here is I'm really looking at the first thrust down, which was back in June of 2021. Volume there was about 18 million shares. The next time that we were down in this area was back on July 19th. That was 13 million shares. And this week, we're already at 23 million shares. But uh, that's the only pattern that I could see that would suggest maybe taking some kind of, uh, um, you know, long position. But I, I, it's just the volume this week suggests that we really should see lower price. Does that make Very any sense good. to you? Yeah. And, and my chart is showing uh, on the daily uh, the 329 and change and okay. the weekly 339 and change. So uh, that, that's what it shows me here that it's going to bottom there at 329 and change on a daily okay. chart. So uh, that, your that numbers are very close that, by. Very, yeah. very close. It's not the same, but it's very close to that. But still, it's not time to buy. I don't think it's a time to buy. I don't see any any uh, any any uh, strike at the end of the tunnel. But I'm going to keep an eye on it very very carefully. I want to buy that and keep it, but I don't Got know it. where to buy. But hopefully, sometime some days it will that will happen. Sure, but I do sure. thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. you you bet, Garo. Thanks so much for calling. That was Garo in California. And uh, so let's get back to our request out here. Oh, man, they're, they're starting to pile up. And I don't think we'll get through all of them today. But uh, Tom writes in, and this is Tom from Middleborough, Massachusetts. He wants to take a look at uh, Moderna, MRNA. So let me get that up on our screen out here. And let me get that fired up on one of my, whoops, on one of my white background charts. And um, for right now, I'm just going to stick with the daily time frame out here. So the question is, a few weeks back, I believe that you indicated if Moderna broke through support at about 228, 230, it would be headed to 161. Looks like this is the scenario unfolding. Nice call. I'd like to go long Moderna if you can hold support at 161 bucks. So when we take a look at Moderna right now, the next support area out here, Tom, is going to be at 155.36. I'm not saying that's where you buy it. I'm just suggesting that that's the next support level. That is coming from the monthly time frame. That is the bottom of its profile. Now, at 155.36, it's going to be important to watch that level. You have both the center and the bottom of the profile right there. So you've got a strong hand for buyers. Now, what you'd like to see as price gets back to 155.36 for 
for this is some type of bottoming pattern on the daily and even the weekly time frame, but at least on the daily time frame. And as we uh, go ahead and expand out this white background chart, we'll see we don't have anything, any bottom signal. Now, it does show wave number seven. That's letter G. But that'll continue until there is a higher low out there. So that's one potential bottoming pattern. But I wouldn't step into this, uh, uh, Tom, unless price were able to close above that oscillator and change line, really for two consecutive sessions. We can see that that has been really since the uh, uh, middle of December, that has been a real deflection point. So that's going to be helpful to you. There's A to B equals CD patterns to the downside, but those are going to take us to much lower prices out here. So I don't see a bottoming pattern or signal at this stage here for Moderna. So let's do this. Again, take this one step at a time. Price should continue to move lower, should be targeting that 155.36 level. Watch the daily time frame. As far as where we're at on the daily time frame for potential bottoms, this is going to be bar number five. So it could be a TD9 count. Could be. And that says that that would be sometime next week. Maybe it's Wednesday, Thursday of uh, next week when we'd see that. So uh, or if you see some type of bullish reversal candle in Moderna, you know, then uh, check back with me and we can take a look at it. But it's going to be preferably as price gets to 155 and change. And then you get some type of bottoming signal on that daily time frame. Hector and Patty right in. Hector wants to take a look at um, micro, uh, not Microsoft, but uh, Morgan Stanley. And the uh, question is, is uh, Morgan Stanley on an ABC Weekly up? Can you do a, uh, can I do a lightning bolt pattern? So, uh, no, I don't see an A to B equals CD up on a weekly basis. You specifically were asking about on the weekly chart. So, I I don't see that when we take a look at Morgan Stanley. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm going to just expand out this chart out here. I'm going to try to. Whoops. Got to hit the right button. Yeah, so I think, Hector, you're, you're trying to do an A to B equals, my guess is, well, let me see. What do you have right here? Using the B point as this week as a possible C point. Yeah, and then you're going to, I'm guessing you're looking at starting this A to B all the way back at March 16th, 2020. I mean, that's a gigantic move. I, I, I'm that, um, yeah, so I'm not really in that camp out here. Here's what I can share you with you with regard to Morgan Stanley. So why don't we get right to it? And that is right now, specifically today, uh, price is making a counter trend move, at least up to the bottom of that daily profile that price has been below. So 101.45. So that's the first level that price is going to need to close above in order for this to get any mojo to the upside. If it does do that, then we should see a move up to 103.60 to 104.19 or to 105.95. Those are going to be your battlegrounds. So again, a move above 101.45, your battleground becomes 103.60, 104.19, and then in the 105 level, either 105.75 or 105.95. Now, when I take a look at Morgan Stanley on just the daily time frame, I'll pull that white background chart out here. If you So you can see that price is trading just above that green oscillator and change line at 100.35. So if Again, that price closes above 101.45. You should see more rally, more rally, more counter trend rally. Um, I don't really have I don't see a pattern out here other than a consolidation that this has been in. So that consolidation, we can draw that in here. Give me a moment. We'll get that uh, up on our screen. And it's pretty evident. I think everybody sees that consolidation. Certainly the at the top, that's pretty easy to figure out. It should be a little bit higher than that. And at the bottom, we're probably in about this range right here. So you see the consolidation. So price could get all the way up to the top of that consolidation. Do I see an A to B equals CD to the upside? I, I, I really don't, although I see what you're looking at. But first, let's deal or let this deal with the consolidation. And then what I would do, Hector and Patty, is if price broke out of this consolidation, whether it's to the upside or the downside, you've got a measured move that is equal to that consolidation area. Okay, we don't want to use the word consolidation anymore today because that uh, would seem like I'm repeating myself. Uh, so uh, next question coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. Brent wants to take a look at uh, CFMS. So let's get that up on our screen out here. And CF gets conformist, I believe. And Brent's question is, can you take a look at it? You've been patiently waiting for a bottom. This is the area I've gone long in the past. Looks like an army of bottoms for me today on the daily. The weekly TD9 count, I believe, is bar nine. And so let's go take a look at it for him. So let's pull over just the uh, conformist daily time frame chart. And what it does have, so Brent had mentioned he saw a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. He's absolutely correct. 
And that's assuming that we get a bull sash candle today. As long as we close over yesterday's high, that's what we will get. Yesterday was the bar following bar nine of a TD9 count. So that's always a bottom signal. And yesterday was wave number seven. That's letter G. So, Brent, you've got three bottoms in conformance. If this is the area where you typically take a buy, then I concur with that. Now, that doesn't mean that you've got battles. You do. And the first battle is one that it's dealing with right now. And that's at the bottom of its profile. And that level out there, so here's your first battle. That's at 60 uh 68 cents you trade at 67 you want to see a close above 68 the next battle would be 73 the battle above that would be 81 cents and then the battle above that would be 86 so that's your field of play you know where the defense is at you're on offense try to take them out steve Rhodes with tfnm we'll be right back Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So, Brent, I just wanted to answer your question. Uh, I do not have a TD9 count bottom on the uh, weekly time frame. So this is a chart here. So if you're listening on the archive, come, you know, you'll be, you'll be able to see that chart. We're in bar number three on a weekly basis out there. But the daily time frame, you know, does have the bottom patterns, the three bottom patterns we looked at. You really need to see this close above that 68 cent level. Otherwise, it's kind of suspect out there. So the two other questions, one coming in from Greg. He wants to take a look at Chewy out here. C-H-W-Y is the uh, ticker symbol. We're just going to go to the white background charts. 
And today is going to become bar number nine. And uh, you're thinking of playing this. So the bottom can form on bar number eight, nine, to the bar following nine. Um, what I would do, because there's an A to B equals CD to the downside in this, uh, is I would wait for a bullish reversal candle because that would then give you at least a buy the D point out here. And I'd like to see that pattern since you've got the A to B equals CD out here. Now, that's the weekly time frame chart that we're looking at for uh, Chewy. The daily time frame chart tells us what? It shows that we have a Rhodesmentum indicator signal. That's the only signal. So here, what you want to see is some type of bullish reversal candle. You don't have that as we speak right now. Uh, but if you did get that, then price would need to take out 4505 that's the oscillator and change line to say you might have something here now you would have battles at 4793 5088 5530 and then your final battleground would be at the 6120 level that's on the daily time frame for chewy out there uh, which does again uh, looks like it's going to form a TD9 count for the weekly time frame and a real real reason to pay attention to the daily roadsman to indicator signal because that would be your entrant into it. The last question, which I don't think I'm going to have enough time to, comes from Nicholas. He wants to take a look at the ES Mini out here. And uh, if you go over test any suggestions and so forth i'll tell you what we're going to do out here because the show is over basically so normally during the market update you know i go to my indice charts out here nicholas stay tuned for that chart we'll just simply go to the es mini and i'll try to interpret for you what those charts are communicating to us for the multiple time frames steve rhodes with tfnn have a terrific thursday folks don't forget tomorrow morning eight o'clock sharp is when we'll start the show but you can, of course you can listen to the archive version between one and two take care folks